Yeah, okay. that happens to me a lot too. Thank you I'm for gonna, your presence. <laughs> right. I'm going to screen share. Okay. You can see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So if I'm making a new go a new formative here, what I have the option to do is add. So if I have already a PDF, a Google Doc, um, or just a regular doc, I can just drop it in here. Mm -hmm. So I have an example here. Um, let's see, and here it's PDF, okay. Oh, you just slide it in there? Um, I think, I don't think I can drag and drop. I just found, I'm sorry. It's all right. It's you. Okay, so they're processing my file. So here it is, it was a PDF. So if I have this type of fill-in, all you have to do is simply click to add a question. And now when I add my question, I can add, so the red is gonna be the type of question I ask. Since my question's already there, I don't have to do that. Okay. I'm gonna just add, so for this one I would probably do, um, you can either do short answer or I would do multiple choice just because then it's going to grade it for me, which is really nice, which is what I did on my final exam. So I can add a multiple choice question. Um, so let's say, um, I think I want, yin, uh, well, la, la yin, no, uh, and oh, let's let's say, yeah. And let's give perdido and listo. Okay, so I'm gonna mark my answer, right? That's the one uh -huh. I want. I can move this if I need to. And I don't have to type a question because because since it's a PDF that I already had, the question's already there. So now you can click randomize order and it'll mix up the um, choices, which is nice especially for distance learning for kids who are, you know, working together. Oh, so that makes it so they can't cheat. I mean, they probably can talk about it, but it'll randomize the order so they can't say like one is A, two is B right. for a multiple cool. choice. Awesome. Um, another option you could do is, again, I just clicked on it and it added it for me. Um, I'm, let's say I wanted to do a short answer. Mm -hmm. I can just... I don't need to type my question. I can just add a correct answer. The really nice thing about this is sometimes students type in with like a capital letter or a non-cap for, you know, lowercase first letter. And if you're using something like Google Form, um, and let's say my answer um, here, I wanted despierto. So let's say on a Google Form, the student's iPad automatically puts a capital D, Google Form will mark it wrong. But this actually allows for that margin of error and it won't mark it wrong for me. So what, let's about, say I just, what about if the endings or if it's not conjugated correctly? Um, so he, because I have a word bank, hopefully they're just copying. Um, oh, I see. But if you wanted to add multiple correct answers, you could. So if you wanted to. Since I have a word bank, I wouldn't do that because it's This is awesome. There. And did you make that activity? I like it. I did. I did. Yeah. This was a nice. quiz from last year. Nice. Yeah. So, it, you know, it's nice. And here, like if I have a short answer, I can again just click and I can indicate that I want short answer. So mm -hmm. since, como estas hoy, explica, since this is, you know, open-ended and there's not going to be a correct answer, I don't have to give one. But for questions like I showed the pre, kind of predetermined ones, it'll grade it for me, which is really nice. So you could do, let's say, the first part, of the part one, you could do multiple choice. And yes. part two, you could do one word answer. Yeah. Uh, which, uh, with, um, which would still be self-correcting. And then part three, open-ended. So you only have to correct part three. Exactly, which, awesome. you know, when you have a lot of kids, that's, that's really helpful. So that's, that's doing it if you had a PDF or a Google Doc. So for us, for distance learning, this came in really handy because I didn't have to do extra work and create. I used what I would have used if we were in the classroom, and I could just drag and drop it in here. It takes you an additional maybe, you know, 10 minutes to make it now um, interactive on this platform but I don't have to recreate from scratch. So that's one way to do it. 
Now I'll right, show but, you. Well, before we go to the other way, can you tell me what if you did, now it seems to me that another uh, awesome feature is that if you want them to actually answer this uh, orally. Yes, you, they could totally. Let's so, say, how do you do that for number three, part three? Okay. So for this one, uh, cuando estas cansado? If I wanted to hear them speak, when I add my question, again, the red is going to be my type of question. Since it's already in the doc, I don't, can kind of ignore that. I want the student to give me an audio response. So now I don't have to type the question because my question's in this PDF. They'll see that it tells them to record uh, an audio response. So the other nice thing about formative is in the top right here, you have this preview. And you can see what it looks like on a computer, on a tablet, on a phone. So this is exactly what a kid would see. So number one, I had made multiple choice. So uh -huh. this is what the kid would see. Okay. Number two was fill in and he, you know, they would have to type in. Right. Then scrolling down, three was short answer. Four, record audio response. They would click that and record their audio. Oh my gosh, I would totally use this. It's, it, I love it. That's even when I go back into our regular classroom, I'm going to be using this because just even for homeworks, to get kids speaking and it's all in one spot, it's really nice. So um, another, so I'm just going to show you one that I had made. Uh, this year. So we, in my IB class, we were studying two short stories, Apocalypsis y la Intrusa. So I made this whole thing on formative, which I'll show you how to do a blank one in a second. But this is one that I had, but this is what I really liked about it. So I can use this type of question, which is categorized. So I had my two stories, Apocalypsis, Intrusa, and I just chose some sentences to describe each one. And the students had to drag and drop it into the correct story. Um, so that's one type of question you could do, a categorize. Um, so, so are you showing me where they already dra dragged and dropped? So this is my end. This is the answer oh. key. Oh, I yeah, see. Yeah, I'll, sh I'll show you how it looks from scratch. Um, and then I also did a matching. So this was definition to definition, um, mm -hmm. vocabulary word to definition or synonym. Um, here I had some short answer questions or essay questions they're called. And then, so again, all in one document, I put a picture and I asked them in an audio response to talk about these four questions. So now this was all nice in one spot for me. And you can see, I'll show you the student preview. This is what it looks like for the student. So put the phrases with the correct story. They just drag it and drop it, drag it and drop it in. It's, you know, pretty, oh, pretty awesome. simple. Oh my goodness. It's great. This, it, um, for the matching, they literally just can move up and down whatever oh. they need. Whoa. And then here's the short answer where they would type in their short answers. And here is uh, record audio response. Cool. Oh, so man. That's all in one spot, which is really nice. So now if I wanted to, let me go here. If I wanted to make a new one, I'll show you what that looks like. So here's a brand new formative. So you're always going to hit the plus sign to add. Mm -hmm. So usually you'll put some kind of text block or title. So we'll just call this practice one. So again, the red is always going to be the content or the type, uh, like what I'm showing them. So you could do audio. I can put a recording of myself. I could put a recording that I have that I use in class and then ask them to do a multiple choice question with it. You can actually embed, this is really crazy, you can embed something like Quizlet right into this and your students will do flashcard practice right on this same space, which that's, is awesome. that's, that's the main reason people love this because they're, All in one. they're hopping back and forth to different sites. Everything is in one place. Exactly. So, and then, and like I said to you before, my school is a Google school. So we use Google Classroom. It has a Google Classroom sync option. So none of my students had to remember another username, another password. It, it even posts the assignments straight from formative right onto my Google Classroom. 
Wow. So for, for the teacher and for the student, it saves you a, like a lot of steps because I know some of the feedback I was getting from my kids was like, there's so many things, there's so many posts, there's so many um, usernames and passwords and go to Quizlet, then go to this, then go to that. It was just so much from all their classes. So this puts it all in one spot, which I love. And like I said to you before, even when I go back to the regular classroom, just to have this as a tool to use for homework, to use, you know, if I want to do a small group work in my class and I want the other kids to work on something else, they could be recording themselves and practicing speaking on the other side of the room while I'm working, you know, with a smaller group doing something else. So it's got really great, great tools. Um, and another really great uh, feature for us world language teachers is once your students answer the questions, if it's a short answer question and they copied and pasted, Go Formative will tell you parts of this question were copied and pasted. You have, can you show us that? Did that ever happen? Um, I wouldn't be able to, sh it has happened, but I wouldn't be able to show you uh, um, because uh, my students' names are on all the work. Okay, uh, can we see your face now or is there more that you wanted oh, to yeah. show? Oh yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, man, uh, you convinced me. It's great. I mean, and I, that's really just scratching the surface. And it's a very user-friendly company. They listen to teachers and they're always updating. And so if there's something that it doesn't have that you want and you contact them, they're really responsive. So definitely something I'm going to be using long term. I love it. Your school paid for it or you personally paid for it? Um, so at first I had signed up to pay for it because I wanted to use it no matter what and I didn't want to wait for the approval especially just with everything going on but they ran they gave a school um, COVID special for the end of the year which was nice so they gave like a district or I don't know what the license is called a group license um, for a really nice rate so my school purchased it and a lot of our teachers used it um, for example we had we were told we had to give some type of final assessment so we decided for my level two our level two group um we want we had been doing a lot of presentations and projects where the kids recorded themselves and handed in so we said you know what let's do a multiple choice you know cumulative exam at the end of the year so we created one together and formative works like google you can collaborate so we created one together. So we split awesome. it up amongst ourselves. Oh we assigned it to our classes. And since it was multiple choice and we marked the correct answers, all I had to do was I gave, you know, I made sure I used one kids and I made sure everything was right. But all I had to do was look at the, you know, whatever out of 50, 45 out of 50. Okay. You got a 90 and it was great. So, and like you said before, even if you can only, if you use, something you already have and part of it is self-graded and you only have to do a little bit that's still less work than you would have to do right. so it's it's great I can't say enough great things about it well you convinced me <laughs> I, I, I polled my readers and said what would you like me to uh, write about and uh, so actually the uh, the two uh, there were five topics well, one of the two that got the most books was how to not to I can't remember how I worded this how to get students not to use Google Translate and then how to use provide comprehensible input uh, when you're teaching online but other people voted for go formative too so uh, most of them said all of them all of them so I think I'll do this one first since most teachers will probably need this going into the fall and even for comprehensible input this would work because you can record audio of yourself so if it's, there's something you would do in your class normally, you can record yourself. You can uh, put a video into your formative. So if you, if you have a video of yourself, you know, telling a story or doing something like that, you can record that and put that right into formative and then your students can answer questions about it. How to use for CI. Awesome, totally awesome. So yeah, you, haven't, you haven't felt uh, really um, hand-tied, uh, uh, or what's the word, uh, straight-jacketed? 
Yeah, restricted by having to teach online because you've had this, uh, this, this tool? Um, yeah, I, I think that it made it a lot easier for me. You know, I mean, I think ideally all of us would love to be back in our classrooms and, you know, be back with our kids. But as far as managing the work, this tool was for me the best thing that I found because I didn't have to, you know, give my students another username and password. I could put like, if I wanted them to practice Quizlet, I can embed it in there and then continue on with, you know, answer these questions, record yourself here. They're not jumping between so many screens. So I feel like as I said before, the feedback I got from my students was, it's just so much. I mean, they're getting all these notifications every time a teacher posts an announcement, a homework, an update. It was like notification, notification, notification. I teach high school. They have eight classes, all these notifications. They just, you know, then they just start ignoring them. So for me, I loved that I could put everything in one place. And, it, and they said that. They said, we love that you put everything in one place for us because it made it easier for us. So I, yeah, so I feel like especially going, you know, we don't know what's coming up in the fall. Going in, if I have this and I can put everything in one place, streamline it from the beginning, it will be valuable. Awesome. This has yeah. really been helpful. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Now, I have a couple questions. Okay. Um, how do I stop recording? <laughs>